It's a bird. It's a flower. It's Bambi. That sweet deer from the movie that destroyed so many childhoods. Bambi isn't only sweet and innocent, a lot of people forget that Bambi grows into a courageous buck able to withstand wild dogs, fire, and bullets. Bambi is a true survivor, much like his voice artist. Let's find out more about him. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Donnie Dunnigan was born in San Antonio, Texas, United States. Yee-haw! Remember the Alamo! But his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee, United States. Yee-haw! Remember the Graceland. Unfortunately, growing up, Dunnigan and his family struggled with poverty. We were dirt poor, I mean dirt poor, uh, in the Depression, as many were. Quality people, dirt poor. 29, 1929, 1930, 32. And since 1938, um, I had learned to tap dance uh, barefoot um, on a street corner because a, a wonderful black man was tap dancing on Saturday <coughs> in actual tap shoes. We had a Victrola on the sidewalk that you crank up like this. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you're fibbing. You don't remember those. <laughs> <laughs> From a book, you remember. Right? <laughs> and uh, I, I, um, my mother would take me. We had no entertainment. There was no, zero entertainment, zero money. My mother would take me down on Saturday to watch this fellow dance for nickels and pennies. And uh, a large crowd, because of the entertainment. This guy was really good. He had been to an orthopedic surgeon. Had no bones at all. I mean, he just anything. <laughs> so, uh, I'm back there, nobody's paying attention to me. I'm a little run kid, and I'm trying to mimic him. And uh, finally, a couple of ladies uh, took a, a grocery bag and, and, and boot blacked it and made me a top hat with it and a stick from a tree. Da -da 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 -da. Remember Barterville? Mm -hmm. Da 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 da, boom boom. Huh? <laughs> and uh, they put me in a talent contest with the 13 and 14 year olds. I'm four years old. Um, I think I won it on a sympathy vote. <laughs> I was four years old, and there was a talent count, a talent scout. Forgive me, bona fide in those days, scout from uh, RKO Studios, in Los Angeles. And a couple of days later, my parents and I, and uh, remember, we were dirt poor. Uh, I had one suitcase for the three of us. I never forget. I remember, I remember the suitcase. And off to Los Angeles we were on the train with this nice man, and. Uh, Got to Grand Central Station, what I call that, in Los Angeles. Um, very <coughs> impressive. And uh, about four or five days later, um, was rehearsing for Mother Carrie's Chickens. And uh, I know my mother got a new dress. I could tell right away. <laughs> Donnie's first movie was Mother Carrie's Chickens, in which he played young Peter Carey. This was soon followed by probably his second most famous role next to Bambi, Son of Frankenstein as Peter von Frankenstein. Inspector Krogh lost his other real arm in the war. He's a soldier. Oh, are you a general? No, he's, he's something more than a general. He's an inspector. Well, I'm a soldier myself and I'm hunting all day long. Hunting? Did you get anything? Oh, yes, a few elephants and a few tigers. Did you have a nice long nap, darling? No, oh, I'm not a very long nap. A giant come in here woke me up. A giant? <laughs> what an imagination. No, I mean, it wasn't imagination. It was a giant. Come here woke me up. And when I got up, he had a hole in my arm. Did you chase him away with your gun? Oh, no, he was a nice giant. I gave him a picture book, and then he went away. Are there lots of giants around here? Only one that I ever heard of. But that must have been him, then. Perhaps. Later that year, he performed in two other roles, The Forgotten Woman as Terry Kennedy Jr. and Tower of London as Baby Prince. Meanwhile, Walt Disney, AKA The Man, 
was looking for fresh talent and was looking for a child actor to help portray a little deer in his upcoming movie. Mr. Disney called, uh, personally called my mother in Westwood here where we lived mm -hmm. uh, and invited us to come to the studio um, to be the facial model yeah. for it. And uh, we did not know that much about Disney. That's the honesty of that. My mother made some phone calls and um, called our agent. <clears throat> <clears throat> we had an agent. I had an agent for several films, right? Uh, I'd be fibbing to you if I didn't tell you I did not like this fellow much. Uh, I was five years old, going on 15 maybe, a little, huh? Here comes our agent. He heard about, oh, he's going to be in a cartoon. No, we don't want him in a cartoon. I'm going to put him in another movie coming up soon. No cartoon. He got very tough with my mother. I mean, really tough. In my own house, right? I fired him. <laughs> fired him. Later, we heard it for a long, long time. Uh, a five-year-old, runt little kid, me, <laughs> fired his agent from New York, right? <laughs> when we went to, uh, we went to uh, uh, Disney's uh, studio, a lot of construction, as I remember, going on. There had some newness to it. I was thrilled to death, thrilled to death. Here's the place where they have all these funny little characters, huh? <laughs> not some boring soundstage for a kid that's five years old yeah. who wants to ride his bicycle and play with his puppy dog, not in the soundstage of the studio. So I was delighted to be at Disney. <laughs> Donnie was first hired by Walt to stand in as a face model. He was very deer-like, I guess. I wonder if they made a model in front of a pair of headlights. He was asked to make different faces and animators would sit and draw his expressions. Soon after, he was asked to provide Bambi's voice. Because I was around for the facials, off and on, and then the voice, off and on, just like Peter said, it, it, the time was elongated. There was a lot of interruptions. And if you're, if you're quiet and you behave yourself, contrary to what my wife might tell you, right? <laughs> they forget you're there if you're a kid, right? I was around a lot, and sometimes there's nothing to do, but you just, they wanted you there, right? I had seen in seven previous movies, excellent directors, excellent producers, excellent sound people. Then I saw some, uh, ladies will get mad at me, I saw some pompous jackasses. Right? <laughs> and forget it, that's a curse thing. But, you know, the old ring comes out of me once in a while. Right? I mean, some real, when the sound people and the assistant directors say, oh, watch out, watch out, here he comes. Huh? What kind of leader is that, right? Huh? Uh, Mr. Disney was absolutely the opposite. And if you didn't know who he was, moving around, getting things done, you'd think it, they, somebody just hired him and he's trying to impress somebody. You know what I mean? He was busy, 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 busy. And, he, and uh, uh, they had not had children on the lot before. Um, uh, and I tease about this sometimes. And I think uh, sometimes uh, they, uh, some ladies that I go th through an office because I'm lost, hadn't seen a child since birth. <laughs> you know, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> so Peter and I, and a wonderful, wonderful little girl that, that played for Lee, uh, I, uh, must have been some of the very first children uh, aboard Disney Lock. Uh, I almost got fired on this one. Okay? <laughs> I'm sure my mother was always worried about my getting fired. So, uh, mind you, uh, has, I've been as, as a child actor with all the crazy curly hair. Remember that curly hair and those things? Huh? Straight as a string. They curled it twice a day. It was a bummer. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I was kind of six, maybe five and a half, going on 19 kind of guy. Huh? By the time I got to Disney. Before the voice work was the facial model. They look left, look right, look afraid. And I, I had always known the storyline. You know, what is this about? You know, somebody gave us some idea. Um, have Boris Karloff. Who, who was a great guy, <laughs> give you the storyline of Southern Frankenstein that you have really lived. I'm going to tell you, he was a good storyteller. Okay? So, I'm, what's the storyline? What's the storyline of this baby thing? Right? And nobody would, nobody would tell us, right? Now, I had not seen a deer. Now, later we had the animals aboard uh, Disney Lot. But I had not seen a deer in my life. Remember, we were very poor, and now the movies bang, 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 one movie after the other. Didn't he get in the public school until the, I think the third or fourth grade, tutor, 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 all the time. So, I'm making a lot of noise about, I, show me a deer that's moving, right? <laughs> so they took me to uh, Griffith Park Zoo, right? And there was a deer, one deer, down in a, a very well manicured pit, sorry, a very depressed area with a fence around it. One deer, right? And just like this. 
No move, right? Yeah. What? Look at a statue. So somebody went to a little machine or something, got some corn or something. You know, I could throw the deer. So I threw it at the deer, right? And it bounced right by him. Here's the, here's the deer, right? <laughs> and I said, quote, Mom, I remember this early, right? Mom, that that is boring. That deer is boring. I don't want to be boring. <gasps> and my mother said, don't say that back at the studio. <laughs> there were two guys with us from, from Disney. Very courteous men in suits had motored us there. Okay? Uh, and so I think they ratted me out on this one because about two days later, could have been more than that, I'm walking down the hallway with something I'm supposed to have for a change. Here comes Mr. Disney with somebody and he's busy. But he's walking down the hall facing me. He puts his hand up and pauses me. I've seen him before many times. I've talked to him. Very nice, incredible human communication guy. Okay? He looked at me and he says, You went to the zoo? Yes, yeah, sir. And you saw a deer? Yes, yeah, sir. And he was Listen to this, this is funny. Donnie, don't worry. Our Bambi will not be boring. <laughs> <laughs> I went home, I went back and told my mom that. <laughs> he was a leader. <laughs> he really was. I had seen several people in the film industry that were super, super good. I saw some that needed to be good. <laughs> Mr. Disney was a contrast. He was a leader. He had his sleeves up, rolled up half the time. He was participating um, in some studios. Uh, <clears throat> I won't mention where or how. Um, <laughs> the employees, the sound guy, the camera guy would say, watch out, here he comes, here he comes. What kind of leader is that? Here he comes, right? <laughs> Be careful. When Mr. Disney would show up, it was very, very warm. Here comes Walt, he'll help. Ask him about that. Mm -hmm. That's called participation leadership. And it made a heck of an impression on me. In an interview with Mouse Info in 2011, Donnie was asked what direction he was given for everyone's favorite scene, Bambi's mother's death scene. Whew. Donnie replied, I remember this well. When I was told to say with some stress, mother, mother, I must not have had the tone of fear that the story needed. A coach, I think it was a nice lady at the studio, asked me how I would cry out loud if my own real mother were lost and in great danger. That made it easy. Thus, the fear tone of, Mother? Mother? Mother! Mother, where are you? Oh, now you did it. <laughs> you had to roll the clip, didn't you? When asked if he has a favorite scene from Bambi, he responded, The young deer kiss. While Bambi was feeling sorry for himself sitting in a thicket, I had to pretend to have taken a double dose of castor oil, grim stuff for a kid, in order to make such an unhappy face with angry eyes. Boys at that age do not want to be kissed by a cute girl. I'm glad I grew out of that phase. Classic Donnie Dunnigan Zing. Unfortunately, child stardom took its toll. The family had gone from destitution to luxury. Donnie remembers, it turned out that all that money hurt my family. We'd gone from a one-room tenement to a house in Beverly Hills, and it was too much too quick. The family just ruptured, and I was then farmed out to a bunch of people. By the age of 13, Dunnigan was living in a boarding house and working as a lathe operator. At 18, he enlisted in the Marine Corps, he put his past behind him and stashed his memorabilia in an army footlocker. Dang. I think the lead cause was Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it changed everything. Uh, like, I wish I was your age. <laughs> it changed everything radically. Um, within two or three weeks of Pearl Harbor, there were uh, army troops aboard Disney lot mm -hmm. marching around and uh, for all kinds of good reasons. And uh, uh, Disney did not make any other films for entertainment. Um, for at least three years that I know of, three and a half during the war, he supported the, quote, then War Department with all kinds of training films and motivational films. Um, and uh, my family had some trouble with the war and 
and uh, other personal things, and it broke up. From age 14 forward in my life, I supported myself in a boarding house uh, from then to now. Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I, never, I never looked back on it. I don't think I mentioned it to anybody from about age nine forward, all the films. In fact, <laughs> my, wife, <laughs> my wife and I were married for two years uh, before she discovered the films. And um, when she found them in a box, okay, what's this, what's this, what's this? You know, why didn't you tell me about this? Well, I just didn't, you know. I ate peanut butter for a week. <laughs> no, that's an exaggeration, but pretty close. Hello? What you eating? About uh, 1975, 78, um, when they, they came out the first time in the reel to reel, remember those? <laughs> right. Yeah? And all the children were standing in line in San Diego to, to get a copy. I said, wait a minute, I was part of that. I never told anybody. I never told anybody in the Marine Corps. Never. 25 years? Mute. Okay. And all the children buying them and the parents buying them. I said, Golly, I'm part of that. <laughs> you know? And it made me very proud. But I still didn't tell anybody. I was raised by some very strong men in the Marine Corps from World War II. I went in in early January, 53. They were still around, right? That if you achieve things, if you have the, the luck to have done some significant things, don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. okay. My first commanding officer had navy crosses and, and, and bronze stars and silver stars galore from World War II. I never saw him wear them for months and months until a parade, and I was flabbergasted. I asked a very astute first sergeant, why doesn't the colonel uh, 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 wear, his, wear his medals and his ribbons? He says, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to show off to be a leader. And that stuck in here, mm -hmm. real hard. A, a dear friend of mine just recently pointed out to me the irony of my life with Bambi. Bambi was shot, got down on the deck. His father had his, that magnificent uh, deer, big rack, had to come up. Bambi, get up, get up, you must get up. Right. I've used that several times with other people and maybe myself. I was shot more than once and I got up and I'm still here with you. Mm -hmm. The irony of that is it's worth thinking about, isn't it? Absolutely. Huh? <laughs> Five years ago, five and a half years ago, in San Angelo, Texas, right down the road here, okay, uh, a nice old lady, thanks to my, my wife going ba 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 ba. Uh, oh, she's sitting here too, I'm in trouble. Uh, <coughs> I let it out, and uh, Disney found out I was still sucking air, and I was okay, you know, and then all this began, mm -hmm. and it's been a joy. Mm -hmm. uh, during his long military career, he first became possibly the Marines' youngest ever drill instructor. Later, he served in the Korean War, followed by three tours in Vietnam, where he was wounded several times before finally retiring with the rank of Major in 1977. For Dunnigan's service, he received a Bronze Star and three Purple Hearts. Not too bad for a once scared little deer, I guess. After retirement, Donnie lived comfortably with his wife. Unfortunately, in the 80s, he lost most of his savings in the Enron debacle. Since then, it's unclear what he's been doing financially to recover. His secret finally came out in 2004, when a family friend happened to catch Son of Frankenstein playing on late night TV. She put two and two together and blabbed to the local press. This led to a spot on a Texas news channel and a phone call from Disney, who had assumed he was dead. Wow, we love the power of the press. With the cat out of the bag, Donnie now spends his time receiving fan mail, giving interviews, and chatting about both his career in the military as well as in the movies. In conclusion, let's end on hearing from the deer himself, Donnie. This is 75th anniversary now, which is why we're here. It's one this wonderful guy, and this old jerk is here. Right? <laughs> in the last nine, nine and a half years, since Disney found out that, that uh, that uh, we, we were still around, and uh, I remember that call. You know, you're still breathing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last nine years. Been able to get more done for good things, but Bambi. Then if, if three of us, four of us, had been decorated in the White House five times, I'm good service, okay? And evidence of that, instead of just being rhetoric, or things like this. I get one of these a month. Christmas time more than one a month. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Peter. Uh, look at here. With letters inside from children all over the world. 
Look at here. One a month minimum, plus two and a half to three letters a week from all over, from uh, Scandinavia, from Canada, from Panama, everywhere. And Russia. Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I got one from Russia just not long ago with no no return envelope, no return. Oh. <laughs> that made it a little hard. Anyway, that? excuse me. No, no. <laughs> Watch out, he probably had a microphone in it. <laughs> but uh, that's the best evidence to, to go to the heart of your question, okay? And I've said this several times, but it, it still is an emotional thing for me. I promise you, you walk into a, a group that's trying to raise money for something and they're having a hard time. And they can introduce Peter and me and Charlie Potato over here and all kinds of credentials and it all go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And as soon as somebody says, and by the way, that old jerk was Bambi, bang! <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the problem with the playground, fixed. Mm -hmm. Problem with this, Fixed, okay? Because a Bambi cannot live better than that little deer in our culture. Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our Coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Disographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another discography.